Welcome to HDMI Podcast. I'm delighted to welcome today Mr. Yves Givel, Director of Performance and Talent Management at Hyatt Hotels Corporation. Thank you for being here. Happy to be here. Uh, last time we spoke, we um, were talking about the issues of how organizations, managers, leaders influence a, a learning environment. Now, today I want to concentrate on um, the aspects of the leader him herself. Um, my first question would be, leaders, are they born or made? <laughs> what is your opinion on it? It's always, it's always a good question, and I think it's a, it's a bit of a philosophical question. Um, probably the best way to describe it is a model that you can use when you look at leadership, and it's called the head, heart, and gut model. Mm -hmm. uh, Head, heart, and gut is a model where, which can be used to describe a successful leader in an organization. It sort of helps you to formulate your, your philosophy or strategy. Mm. So you have the head, and the head is all about skills, competencies, things that you can learn as you go along. You have the heart, which is your motivations, your values, uh, it's your personal characteristics. And then you have the gut, and the gut is very much based on experience, things you have lived, things you have seen. So if you look at the aspect of leadership, leadership really touches all three levels. Mm -hmm. Some of your leadership behaviors are innate. I mean, you are sort of wired a certain way, and you will react a certain way, which is your natural behavior. Some leadership skills can be learned because somebody might be aware of his or her personal characteristics and has learned how to behave in certain situations. And some leadership behaviors and skills are just based on experience, things you have learned mm -hmm. uh, in your life as you go along. So mm -hmm. probably wasn't the correct answer, yes or no, but I think you know some parts of leadership can be taught, some parts of leadership are inside you, and some part of leadership uh, comes from your experience, and that's how I would best describe it. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a, a figure in history, Aristotle, and, um, and Tom Morris um, has written this uh, fascinating book called If Aristotle Ran General Motors. Mm -hmm. So we have this historic philosophical mind, and uh, finding this philosophical mind in an organization, a contemporary organization. Now, my question would be, what would Aristotle do wrong mm. if he would run a contemporary organization? Um, or perhaps the question, is being a good leader enough mm. to run an organization successfully? Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I'm not overly familiar with all the, the, the details around Aristotle's leadership philosophy. I remember one thing he, he, he was talking about. He was talking about uh, dismiss the middle way. So it's either left or right. Uh, um, I think it's very interesting. He says no compromise. Uh, um, probably no compromise on your values, uh, I would agree. Uh, in my dealings with people, I think you have to compromise certain certain times. Uh, so, so just on that statement, uh, I thought that was quite interesting. Um, otherwise, looking at, at Aristotle as a leader versus maybe certain managerial skills that you need, uh, um, again, I think the two of them have to play together. Uh, a lot has been written about um, what is leadership, what is manage managerial skills, uh, where the differences, uh, what is more important. Uh, and I think at, at one stage, you, you have to define what it means for you or for your organization. Um, some people say that uh, management is about um, doing things right and leadership is about doing the right things. Mm. So some of the things are more value-based, are more holistic, whereas others are maybe more process-based. Mm. Um, you can lead people, you can manage a process. Um, I think leaders today, um, they have both skills. It also goes a little bit into the debate between Am I looking for a transformational leader or a transactional leader? Mm. Um, some organizations need leadership, some organizations need managerial um, input. So I think it's difficult to say which one is more important. Would Aristotle be uh, a good leader in General Motors? Uh, um, I think General Motors probably needed a couple of, of, of managerial inputs as well, not only leadership. Mm. So I think it's very company specific. I mean, uh, it's the theory around contingency. 
whether leadership is contingency specific or not. So in some instances, uh, you need you need somebody who who has the managerial skills, to, who can manage a process, who can get things right working. And in some instances, you need a leader who sees the big picture, who has the vision and moves people forward. Maybe one area is more short term, one area is more long term. So again, it all depends. At General Motors at the time, I think they needed somebody who could fix the problem fairly quickly. They needed somebody who can bring in some stuff that works in the 12, 18 months that followed. And maybe at one stage, they're going to need long term leadership again in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. Perhaps this Aristotle had this this value values mind and and and, um, and at that moment, yeah, general general just needed some urgency acts. Perhaps mm -hmm. they themselves have lost values. Mm -hmm. um, now, if I if I can explore a little bit more on these leadership characteristics, in your opinion, what would be the most important characteristics of effective leadership mm -hmm. in an organization? Mm -hmm. I think, again, and I might talk around this a little bit, uh, but it's difficult to pinpoint which one is really important. I think it depends, again, how does the organization define leadership. Some organizations, they're looking for efficiency. Some organizations look for effectiveness. Uh, some organizations look for innovation. Some organizations uh, look for compliance. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, again, very contingency based on what the organization is looking for. What are the values of the organization? Uh, what kind of leadership skills are valued in a certain organization? Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Um, you have some very successful companies that are still working with Taylorist workforms, mm -hmm. which is very, um, people are getting trained in very narrow skills. So this is what you learn, this is your job. Uh, it's very much a compliance culture, and the kind of leadership characteristics are built around compliance. Whereas you look at some of the more innovative companies, you look at Apple, you look at the Google, you look at some of those other small startup companies, uh, they're looking for skills around innovation, empathy, um, uh, able to experiment, um, uh, collaboration, and all that. Mm -hmm. So it all depends what, you, what you're looking for. If I look at, at Hyatt, for example, where at the moment a lot of it revolves around innovation, about continuous improvement, uh, about participation, about being agile, uh, adaptable to the environment. Uh, um, we're going to start looking more and more for different leaders than we looked in the past. Whereas in the past, we were looking for leaders that could follow brand standards and were conforming to some of the standards we had. Uh, mm -hmm. Now we're looking more and more for leaders who are not afraid in taking risks. One of our first questions these days to, 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 uh, to a leader joining the organization is, tell me about your last failure. Mm. So they usually look at me and say, what do you mean? And I say, just tell me about last time you failed. Mm. Because the person who hasn't failed has never experimented. Mm. And so again, even for us, this focus has shifted. Mm -hmm. And we are much more looking for, for, for those kind of characteristics around innovation, about risk-taking, about around participation, empathy, than the more compliance and process-based person we're looking for before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this um, aspect of um, of failures is also rich, a rich experience, and um, it makes uh, it makes people reflect on on on, on oneself um, and to get to know oneself better. And um, a former executive of Starbucks, Howard Bihar has written a book called It's Not About the Coffee. Mm -hmm. um, and in that book, he, he mentioned one of the most important things a leader must have is, in fact, he must know who he is, mm -hmm. who she is, before he can lead other people. Mm -hmm. So be a leader for yourself before you can lead other people. Now, to what extent do you agree with this, with this statement? I think knowing yourself is very important. Uh, a lot has been written in the, in the last few years about emotional intelligence. Uh, uh, emotional intelligence all about knowing yourself, knowing the kind of impact your behavior has on other people. And it's very important. Uh, as an example, a lot of organizations use assessments these days. Uh, but the best practice is to use the assessment in conjunction with other elements. Uh, 
because an assessment alone only tells me how somebody, I kind of like the term, is wired. Yeah. It's how somebody is wired. Mm. But what's more interesting for me is, does the person know how she and uh, he is wired, uh, and what do they do about it? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where, where the learned behaviors come in, because not everybody has the perfect personality characteristics. We all have our little um, strengths and areas of, of, of development. Uh, but the strength, the real strength, is about knowing what your natural behavior is uh, and how you can modify that behavior if necessary. Mm -hmm. um, so as an example, you have certain people, by nature, they're just not detailed. The ones you know you're not detailed and you teach yourself, okay, every time I have a paper to submit, I'm going to reflect over that paper, sleep overnight, look mm -hmm. at it again next morning, then submit it. If you have that little process in your mind, you can overcome certain personal characteristics mm -hmm. that, could be, that could be slowing you down. Mm -hmm. And I think the strength is all about knowing yourself, know what your natural behaviors are, and where do you have to do adjustments so you can, you can have proper growth in your career. Mm -hmm. So... In essence, I would fully agree that you need you need to know yourself uh, in order to know how other people perceive you and what you have to do to become a real yeah. effective leader. Isn't that perhaps a little bit neglected in today's organizations when it comes to developing and spotting leaders? I think? Um, yes and no. I think um, quite often we don't take the time to understand why people behave in a certain way. Mm. Uh, performance management is just based at what I see. I don't seek to understand, mm. and I think it's important that uh, you know every individual in the organization is given a chance uh, to discuss issues, how can they be overcome, and I think if I look at leaders, uh, um, you know, I, th I think you just have to be, you have to give them the tools as well to learn about themselves, uh, identify their strengths and areas of improvement, uh, because a lot of it is also based on their motivations. Mm. And again, somebody who wants to become a director of sales, but he just not, doesn't have the motivation, the passion, the personal characteristics to do that, very early in the career you have to start to talk to him or her. Mm. And uh, I think, yes, it is neglected sometimes because we just don't take the time to, to treat individuals as individuals. Mm. Now, <clears throat> let's speak a little bit about, uh, about Hyatt Hotels Corporation. What does the organization do to spot leadership talent? Do they have a system in place for that purpose? It's a bit of both. Um, Hyde is very much a, a company of relationships. Uh, mm -hmm. So so quite often leadership is, is also spotted by how well somebody can create um, relationships, uh, probably like many organizations. But we also have processes in place that are a little more objective uh, in making sure that we, we identify the right leaders. Uh, um, we have processes in place that on one side assess an individual's performance uh, because for us a top talent is based on, 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 on three main factors. One is performance, one is potential and one is readiness. Mm -hmm. uh, performance is all about what are your goals, how well are you doing in achieving those goals, how are you achieving those goals. So again, it's important we're not just looking for people who can set goals and achieve them by walking over their bodies. Uh, we want to know that they achieve those goals based on the values of the organization. Mm -hmm. um, we then look at, at um, performance, uh, at potential as well. And potential is a various of factors that come into play when you talk about potential. Um, potential can be assessed with a, an assessment, giving us some indications about the potential that somebody has. Uh, it's about the conversations you have with the person to see how well does the person know him or herself, mm -hmm. um, a track history they've had. Um, it's about their learning agility. Are these leaders that are willing to learn? Uh, their empathy level uh, levels. Uh, you know, can they listen to people? Can they can they can they can they get the best out of other mm -hmm. people? Um, things like mobility as well. Mm -hmm. You know, are these people that in a in a global organization are, are able to move around? Mm -hmm. And then the third factor is uh, readiness. And again, there we're just talking about uh, in, in in a succession plan environment, for example. Uh, you might say, fine, this is a high potential person, but if that person is only ready in three years for the next position, mm -hmm. that's not what we're looking for. 
Mm-hmm. So again, it has to be a certain readiness so that you say, find a person who's ready now, ready over the next 12, 18 months. Mm-hmm. So, you know, these are the three factors that we're looking at. And, and to making these leaders, potential leaders, um, um, ready on, on the way to readiness, do you have, do you have a certain uh, techniques or approach you use to develop these leaders? Do you use development centers or... Um, we have, yeah. I, mean, I mean, it depends on what level they are, because mm-hmm. um, uh, we have a philosophy where we say we have leaders at all levels. So, uh, we try to start identifying future leaders in entry-level positions already, in supervisory, managerial positions. And I think on that level, the training might be, or the development might be less individualized uh, mm-hmm. as it would be for more senior leaders. Mm-hmm. So our approach is both curriculum-based and Mm. individual-based. The further up somebody grows in the organization, the more individualized the development will become. If I'm planning development for uh, a senior vice president in development, uh, that development plan is going to look very different than if I look at the restaurant manager in the hotel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, We have certain curriculum in place for leadership development which brings them up to like a, a department head, a executive committee level. Uh, we sprinkle some, some individualized learning in there, uh, and then the higher they come, the learning will become more individualized. Mm. We look at learning, um, we look at three different learning areas. We're looking at, at experiential learning, mm-hmm. we're looking at uh, coaching, and we're looking at formal learning. Mm-hmm. Because the easy solution is always send them on a training course. Mm-hmm. But reality is, the way people learn, that only constitutes about 10% of their learning. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about individual development, uh, uh, there has to be coaching, there has to be uh, experiential learning. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this could include some, some great learning activities like um, uh, project work, uh, going on a pre-opening assignment, uh, mm-hmm. stretch assignments, uh, uh, cross-exposure. Uh, mm-hmm. th- there's lots of ways that we can develop our mm-hmm. people. Uh, the coaching aspect is very, very interesting as well. Because coaching everybody only thinks from the being coached side, but actually giving somebody a coaching assignment is a great learning opportunity Mm, as well. mm. And then yes, we combine this with formal learning as well, whether it's internal training courses, whether it's accreditation courses, uh, or what we do for example for senior leadership, we have a a higher leadership forum, which runs once a year, Mm. where we invite senior leaders of the organization and run them through a, a variety of learning activities mainly based around um, global business uh, global business education uh, to give them really this global perspective uh, in, in for a global company like mm-hmm. we are mm-hmm. very systematic in that sense are you there is it is systematic and it is not mm-hmm. there are processes in place but at the end of the day it's very individualized especially yeah. for the senior leaders uh, but we have a variety of directions we can take uh, yeah. and, and that system is really in place Mm. Now, you mentioned before um, transactional leadership, uh, transformational leadership, contingency approaches. Um, Blanchard also postulates the need for situational leadership, um, where individuals are being treated according to their uh, readiness and um, and maturity in the development world level. Yeah. yeah. Um, how serious do you take these aspects in, in your leadership development or in your quest for effective leadership in mm-hmm. in Hyatt hotels? I think what we have seen is um, a situation leadership becomes very important in this in this first leadership role. So as we as we put employees into this first supervisory, assistant manager, manager roles. Uh, um, they have to deal with this, this, this situational leadership because you might have a, a 23-year-old graduate uh, taking over an assistant manager position working with employees that have been there for 30 years and being able to teach the graduate that you cannot deal with your senior employee the same way you deal with a new employee it can make a world of difference in somebody's early career. Mm. Uh, I, th- I think that's where quite often they, they fail in these first supervisory assi- assignments. Uh, and I think the more they know that um, different strokes for different folks, uh, and how do I deal with a more senior employee, how do I deal with a more junior employee, to get the best out of them, mm-hmm. that's a very valuable concept for them to understand. Mm-hmm. And I think you, it, it's a very simple concept, uh, 
and uh, it, it's all about how much guidance versus how much uh, coaching you do and I think once they get it that's going to help them in the rest of their career as well. Mm -hmm. It's a concept that, that sort of becomes very in it once you, once you, once you hear about mm -hmm. it. So yes, I think it, it's, it's a very interesting, a very helpful concept for emerging leaders so to, when, when they really go in their first supervisory assignments. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we have um, covered a few key aspects of leadership, um, essentials of effective leadership. My last question would be, if you would choose one leader of history to lead an exemplary dual organization, mm. who would that be? Probably somebody that you wouldn't know, uh, and uh, probably, I can't even name him, uh, but he was somebody I knew out of my military service, and that might sound strange. Uh, because everybody says you, the kind of leadership you learn in the army is not what you can apply in the industry. Um, but many, many years ago, I, uh, I was invited and I was talking to a, an army captain who had been in the Falklands. Uh, and uh, he was doing a speech about, about leadership and uh, how he was leading his troops at the time. And I was I was terribly impressed mm -hmm. in, ter in, in, in terms of the, the balance he had in being able to inspire his troops and in, in having him standing behind him and I was very impressed because I think the ability to inspire others uh, mm -hmm. is very important for a leader. He might not have been perfect. I'm not sure if I would let him run Hyatt, <laughs> um, but I, I think uh, being an inspirational leader is very important these mm -hmm. days. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Joel, for being here. It's my pleasure. See you perhaps another time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.